Hey, what's going on everybody? Today, we're going to learn about this RHCE exam objective, which has to do with creating and distributing SSH keys to our managed nodes. Now, there are several ways to actually go about doing this, but here are two notable methods that I'd like to cover in this video. One way is to use the good old SSH keygen command to generate a key pair, and then to run SSH copy ID to copy the public key to each managed node. And of course, this totally works, but it is a bit laborious, especially if you have a lot of systems to manage. So here's the other way. We can write an Ansible playbook using the equivalent modules to those commands to do essentially the same thing, but with the benefit of being a lot more automated. And this is just a quick aside, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with using SSH copy ID. So what I've decided to do is just save that stuff for the end of the video. We'll go over the Ansible playbook method first, since it's a lot more interesting. Sounds good? Alright, then let's go. So, as usual, what we'll do to get started is create a new project directory for today's activity. So that's going to be project 4, and I'll cd into there. There we go. And from here, I'm going to take a moment to type out an inventory and ansible.cfg file. So I'll speed this up, don't worry, it won't take too long. So yeah, there we go. That's a pretty standard looking inventory right there. Uh, we're just targeting all of our managed nodes in this app servers group. And you know what? I'm actually going to leave app server five out of this. Uh, we'll use that later on at the end of the video, but there we go. Uh, that looks good. And uh, for the ansible.cfg, it's also pretty familiar looking. We just have the ask pass option turned on right now. And that's so that we can log in with a password one last time before we switch to using keys. And host key checking is also disabled, by the way, so that we don't need to manually accept the fingerprint by logging into each node. And that reminds me, actually, for, for this demo, uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete my .ssh directory in my home folder. And the reason why I'm doing this is to simulate what a fresh uh, controller node would actually be like. So there we go. Poof, it's gone. Also, I think we ought to install the Community Crypto Collection from Ansible Galaxy. Uh, this is going to give us a module to generate SSH key pairs so that we don't need to fall back on using the command module to do that. Not that there's really anything wrong with doing it that way. Um, that's fine too, but we'll try to be as convenient as possible. So anyways, uh, I think I already have this installed on this node. So I'll just do Ansible Galaxy Collection install community.crypto and there we go I already have it installed that's good so yeah uh, what we'll do is just make a playbook now let's just call this uh, sshkeys.yml there we go that sounds good and in here I'm gonna put the three dashes at the top to indicate that it's a YAML file okay uh, here's something else that I just like to do uh, I'm going to put a comment here that describes what this entire playbook is all about. So it's going to create and distribute SSH keys to the managed nodes. There we go. That's a nice reminder for us. But what's the plan here, actually? Well, we'll have two plays, one that runs on the local controller node to generate the keys, and a second play that targets the managed nodes to install the public key on them. So to do that, um, it's pretty simple. We're just going to create a play here, and I'll name this play key preparation. And of course, the host that it's going to be on is localhost, because uh, we need to prepare the keys on here. And so now for some tasks, um, what are we going to do? Well, here's something really important. Remember when I deleted my .ssh directory? Well, we're going to need that back, so uh, we need to make sure that exists. So how about this? Uh, my .ssh directory exists. That's the name of this task. And also when I say my, I'm really referring to the controller node, by the way. Okay, so when we want to make sure a directory is present, uh, we're going to use the file module to do that. And I'm going to give it a path. So uh, that could just be home admin .ssh. And you know what? I'm actually going to stop myself there. I don't want to hard code the directory like this because we're going to use it a couple of times. 
uh, we can be a little bit more flexible and actually use some variables, some group variables actually. So um, I'm going to save and quit out of here and actually create a directory called group bars. And inside of group bars, I'm going to uh, make a file called all. And so this is basically the same thing as making variables uh, set in your inventory file itself. Uh, this is just a more flexible solution. It's actually the preferred method of setting uh, host level and group level variables. So yeah, I'm gonna open up this group bars all file. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be variables that are going to be available uh, no matter what host that we're targeting in our playbook. So uh, let's make a variable here. Um, I'm gonna just call it my SSH dir. And so this is actually going to point to our SSH directory. Now, just because I think um, we should be super, super duper flexible, um, I'm gonna do something really fancy here. I'm gonna use a lookup plugin. And this lookup is going to look up environment variables and find the home environment variable, just like that. So this is actually gonna to point to slash home admin, um, but it's dynamic. So if my username was different, it's going to point to the correct username. Uh, another thing we need to do is just make it slash dot SSH because that's the directory that we, that we wanna target. Okay, another thing um, that I wanna just put in here is my underscore uh, key file. So uh, I wanna give the key a special name. You could always just go with ID underscore RSA, which is the typical thing. But uh, I wanna show you what happens if you have a special name for your key and uh, how you would need to specify that in the ansible.cfg. So I'll call this ID ansible uh, RSA, like that. Okay, looks good. So I'll save this. Um, hopefully I made that clear how that lookup thing works. And we'll go back into our uh, playbook file and we'll use that variable. So that's my SSH dir, just like that. And um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, another thing that is really important for the SSH directory is to set the correct mode. So that should be 700, just like so. And the state is going to be directory. Um, that's gonna make sure that it's a present directory. Okay, cool. So um, yeah. Uh, the next thing, uh, the next task is going to be, um, I guess, well, making sure that the key pair exists in .ssh. So we'll just call this one my SSH key pair exists. So um, in here, uh, we're going to use the community dot crypto dot open SSH key pair module, and so. Uh, let me pull up the man page for this actually it's not really a man page it's the ansible doc page for open ssh e pair just like that and let me go down to the examples just to show you so here they are um if you want to generate a key pair almost with all defaults uh, you just need to specify the path and then you're on your way so that's basically what we're going to do cool uh, I'm going to go here and just type in path, and that's going to be my ssh dir forward slash, and then uh, what? my key file. There we go. So that's the name of the key, um, and it's going to go in the ssh directory. And yeah, I, I mean, that's, uh, that's all pretty good for this uh, controller node targeted play. We can actually move on. To the second play now. So that's going to be called, I guess, um, key installation. Makes sense. I'm going to space it down a little more. Key installation. And so the hosts are going to be app servers and the tasks. This is important. Um, I'm going to make a name here that says my public key is in the remote authorized keys file. That's a bit verbose, but sure. And uh, I'm gonna use the authorized key module. Uh, this is built into Ansible. And uh, I'm gonna give it a, like a user. So 
Let me actually show you the documentation for this as well. So I'll go back here and look up authorized key. There it is. So uh, back down to the examples. Let's see if I can find them. Yeah, here they are. So um, you'll notice that it's using the lookup plugin once again over here in these examples to show you how to actually get the uh, contents of a file and stuff that into a variable like key. Not variable, it's a, a option, sorry. So yeah, we're gonna replicate basically what this is doing, except we're gonna use our variables, um, the variables that we set in the group bars. So I'll go back over here. And so for user, it's going to be, uh, let's make this super duper dynamic. We'll use the Ansible user ID fact. That's nice. Um, we'll talk about facts in a future video in more detail. And then for the key, so by the way, that's just going to point to the username that we log into as on our remote host, uh, in case that wasn't clear. So uh, for the key, that's just going to be a lookup. Let me close that. So uh, it's going to be a file. And that file is going to be uh, my SSH your forward slash my key file close that off and then put a dot pub at the end because we want to copy the public key okay hopefully i didn't mess up that um you know variable encapsulation or whatever you want to call it uh next we'll just say the state it's going to be present uh so that's actually on there and yeah uh, i mean we're done um we should be done hopefully there's no problems so yeah, this is our playbook. I'll just quit out of here after saving. And what we'll do now is actually like test this out. So of course we'll run an ansible dash playbook dash dash syntax check on our sshkeys.yml. Looks good. And now we can just go ahead and run it. So we'll just do that uh, before I run it actually. Um, so if I ls, home.ssh it doesn't even exist we can't even look at it so running this playbook is actually going to fix up a lot of stuff you'll also notice that if i tried to ssh into something like app server onelabnet actually uh, a non-standard port sorry and yeah so it, uh, we didn't accept the host key fingerprint and i also am going to be prompted for a password as well so uh, all of this is going to change once we run this playbook that's just kind of what i wanted to show you a little bit of a comparison there i'll run this i'm going to type in my ssh password to log into the nodes and let's get going so uh it created that dot ssh directory what else did it do um it made sure that the key pair exists so it added that key pair um and it went ahead and installed the public key in the remote authorized keys file Okay, so I like the names that I gave to these tasks. It's pretty clear what's going on. And uh, as well, if I run this again, we're going to get all OKs because it didn't actually need to do anything the second time around. So yeah, there you go. Um, uh, let me show you the output of this. So now we have that ID Ansible underscore RSA and dot pub file. And as well, um, I should be able to just say SSH app server one dot labnet. And uh, it looks like I actually need to provide the identity file. That's kind of what I was looking out for. Uh, so that's going to be dot SSH ID underscore Ansible RSA. That's my identity file. And bam, I'm logged in. So uh, there we go. It changed a whole bunch of things um, right there. And yeah, uh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So I'll clear the screen. And um, what I want to show you as well is... So uh, we can change our ansible.cfg file a little bit. We can turn off ask pass. We don't need that anymore. And we can also just like remove these lines actually. Um, we can go with the defaults now. That's pretty nice. And uh, another thing that I'm gonna put in here since we used a non-standard name for the uh, identity file or the private key or whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna need to specify the private 
underscore key file here in the ansible.cfg and point that to um, actually tilde slash dot ssh id underscore ansible underscore rsa just like that so there's my private key and i can just save this and now let's run an ad hoc command so ansible app servers dash m ping and bam i didn't need to enter in the password at all so there you go that's pretty nice um uh, i guess what we'll do now is just use ssh copy id to get app server 5 up to speed because uh, if you remember i left that one out in my inventory so app server 5 let's speed through this real quick the video is getting pretty long anyways um, I'm sure many of you are already aware of how to use SSH keygen interactively, like this. Like, that's all fine and good, but uh, let's use it the non-interactive way just to speed things up. So, I'm going to give an RSA type, I'm going to set the uh, passphrase to nothing, and I'm going to set the output file to uh, home.ssh, and I'll call this id underscore RSA. Sure, it'll just be the default name. There we go, so it got created. And from there, I'm just going to do an ssh-copy-id admin at appserver5.labnet. There we go. So it's I don't even need to specify like the identity file like this uh, because I'm just using the default name of the key. So uh, I'll just run this. And you're going to notice um, I'm getting this strange error. Um, not error, it's just um, an indicator that uh, the host key fingerprint is basically the same on all of my machines, and that's because they're clones of each other. So there's a bit of a spoiler for you. Uh, they're not unique, they're clones, but that's okay. I can just accept this and uh, just type in the password one last time. So that's, there we go. And yeah, uh, now I should just be able to do an Ansible, um, well, I'll add this to my inventory again. So app server 5.labnet. And uh, I'll do an ansible dash um, app server 5.labnet dash m ping. And there we go. So actually, no, um, it's uh, using the uh, identity file that I passed in the inventory. So let me show you um, how that default actually plays out. So uh, if I remove this and go back here, it's going to work just fine. So uh, you need to be careful, make sure that all of your machines uh, use the same private key file if you're going to go that route, or uh, just um, if you don't even want to bother with typing in private underscore key file in your ansible.cfg, then just go with the default id underscore rsa ssh key pair. So that was a mouthful, but there you go. Uh, we just went over ssh key distribution, uh, and yeah, that was a jam. Uh, as always, I hope this video was helpful for you, informative, all of that good stuff, and yeah, thanks for watching.